Hi everybody! So, this is our first ever lecture in the IB Chemistry Interactive Revision Guide. So basically the way this course structure is going to work is we're going to work our way from Unit 1 all the way to Unit 11. Okay, so we're just going to, from all the way from Quantitative Chemistry to Analytics. So I'm going to be teaching this course based on the assumption that you understand 100% of the IGCSE material. Because a lot of the stuff in the IB is basically built on upon IGCSE knowledge. So I'm not really going to go through a lot of the simple concepts in IB just because they overlap with the IGCSC. And since the mole is taught in the IGCSC, I'm only just going to cover it briefly in this lecture and I'll also give you some practice questions just to help you recap. All right, so let's get started. So if you remember from IGCSC, the mole value is 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 or otherwise known as Avogadro's number. So the value itself, 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23, doesn't really mean that much until we talk about relative atomic mass or RAM, okay? Oh, by the way, guys, I just want you to write down this definition as clearly as you as clearly as I can, preferably in the way that I've written it down here. OK, so I'm just going to go through it because there are so many students every year, no matter if it's IGCSE, A levels, IB, they always lose marks on the definition for relative relative atomic mass because of a silly mistake, which I'm going to explain now. Oh, wait, I accidentally erased that. There we go. So. The definition of a relative atomic mass is the mass of a single atom relative to one twelfth, the mass of a carbon-12 atom, okay? So the area where, they, where most students lose marks is because they forget to mention relative to one twelfth, the mass of a carbon-12 atom, okay? So make sure you highlight that part very clearly so you wouldn't lose marks. Now, obviously, now obviously forgetting to write this we're getting to write, write this phrase will only lose you about one out of two marks. But this this is a mark that you shouldn't be losing in the exam. The exam board is basically is the exam board is nice to you in this way, as they basically give you things that you should be able to memorize and get down really clearly. So if you don't really if you don't if you don't actually get this get this down clearly and you lose marks, that's completely on you. It's not because the exam's bad to you, it's just that it's just because you didn't revise properly. So make sure you write this down very clearly. So when you come to the exam, you remember to write relative to 1 12th the mass of a carbon 12 atom to ensure you get full marks on that question. Okay, we're going to go back to the mole value now because now that we know the definition of relative atomic mass, we can now review on the, on the connection between the two. So here the connection is the relative atomic mass in grams of an element such as helium. So helium has a relative atomic mass of about 4.00, okay? So 4.00 grams of helium will be equivalent to the mass of one mole of helium atoms, or 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 helium atoms. And this definition of the mass of one mole of atoms would, is actually also equal to the definition of the molar mass. So I notice we denote it by grams per mole. Okay, one more important thing. So across the, across the entire interactive revision guide, I'm going to be using mainly this method to to denote my units okay so it's grams per mole and rather than grams per mole because we have the because we have the dash there okay because when we actually get into like more complex chemistry we're going to start having multiple units instead of just the two so we're going to have like joules per moles per kelvin those kinds of units so putting it down putting a dash through it this way just is is sort of messy in my opinion so I would use it this way, as in grams per mole with the negative one sign, okay? And, oh, I noticed one more thing. The denotation for molar mass, as you can see here, is large M, or you could just do, or you could do large M and little r. But, but I would prefer large M by itself, okay? Okay, so now that we've covered the concept behind the value of the mole and also relative atomic mass, now we're going to just quickly recap on how to apply these two different questions. So, as you can see on the board, I have four different questions set up, okay? So, all these questions are similar to what you would find in the IB exam. So, i got to be honest with you. Uh, in IB chemistry, this format of quantitative chemistry based upon the mole is quite straightforward at this point, okay? So, the first three questions would be worth about maybe one to two marks. But then, uh, this last question is a little different, but I'll get to that in a moment. So, what I would guys want you to do, I just actually want you to pause pause the video and just try to do the questions on your own. And uh, once you're finished, or if you got stuck, then you could just uh, continue watching the video as I walk through those questions, okay? okay? So we're gonna go to the first question. So the first question here is, 
find the number of moles of Ti, which is titanium, in a 10.78 gram sample. All right, so if we look at the periodic table, we would find that the relative atomic mass, okay, I'm just gonna write here in blue, the ram of Ti is 47.90, okay? So given what we just talked about uh, previously, about how relative atomic mass in grams is equivalent to molar mass, then the molar mass of large M would be 47.90 grams per mole, okay? So now we're gonna use this relationship here, okay? So the number of moles N, the mass of the substance M, little m, and the molar mass big M. Okay, so this is basically a method I used to remember how to do mole calculations. So basically, let me just give you a brief rundown. So n times n is equal to little m. Then m is over n, so m over n would be equal to the molar mass. And then small m over the molar mass would be equivalent to the number of moles. Okay, so that's basically how the triangle sort of works. You don't have to use my method, but I find this method usually works for me, so I'll just use it. So, what we have here, we have, so we know the molar mass, big M, and we also know the mass, little m. So if we want to find the number of moles, n, so we have to go 10.78 grams over 47.90 grams per mole. So if we just plug into the calculator, which I already have beforehand, let me just have a look real quick. Um, yep, there we go. So 10.78 grams over 47.9 grams per mole would be equivalent to 0.225 moles, right? 0.225 moles. So that's how you kind of solve this, um, this question here. Okay, now for the next question. So determine the concentration of NaOH or sodium hydroxide when 0.35 moles of solid sodium hydroxide, notice the states here, this one's solid, this one's aqueous, okay? So is added to 700 cm cube of water. So, um, so another way I used to remember this, to remember the value is also with a triangle. So, but this time it's arranged differently. So, the number of moles n, the volume of the solution v, and the concentration c. Okay. So, we know the number of moles, 0.35 moles, and we also know the volume, 700 cm cube. But wait. If you remember in IGCSE, you would recall that concentration is measured in moles per dm cubed most of the time, rather than moles per cm cubed. So we're going to have to convert cm cubed to moles per dm cubed. No, sorry, cm cubed to dm cubed. So what, we do, what do we do here? If you remember in IGCSE, dm cubed conversion is when you have cm cubed over 1,000, which equals to dm cubed. Why is it 1,000? Because if you think about it, dm is basically means decimeter or 10 centimeters. So 1,000 is 10 to the power of 3. And since it's, since it's base times height times the width, so it is 10 times 10 times 10. So it's 1,000. So cm cubed over 1,000 would be equal to dm cubed. So in this case, because we have 700 cm cubed, or 700 cm cubed over 1,000, that would be equal to 0 0.7 dm cubed, right? 0 0.7 dm cubed, the total solution. So now that we know the volume, 0.7 dm cubed, and we also know the number of moles, 0.35 moles, so we would, in order to calculate the concentration, we would have 0.35 moles over 0.7 dm cubed. And if we just plug it into the calculator, we would have 0.5 moles per dm cubed. Oh, by the way, uh, two more things about this. So firstly, when you're talking about concentration, uh, another way you could represent it is 0 0.5 large M. So large M here stands for molarity. So molarity is basically another way to describe concentration. So molarity is equivalent to moles per dm cubed. So the second thing I want to talk about is that in, the, in IGCSE, you probably would have written concentration as something like this. Okay, with the C as standard for concentration bracket, right? But in IB, we this works a little differently. When you come to writing your IAs, you would have to write it in this formula, okay? Instead of just the C with the bracket, you're gonna have to use the square brackets, okay? Notice, square brackets in order to represent your concentration, okay? So that's basically that it for that question. So let's have a look at this next one here. So. 
Let's see. What volume does 0.732 moles of helium gas, known as the states as well, occupy at STP, standard temperature and pressure? Okay, so if you're not familiar with the concept of standard temperature and pressure, don't worry at this moment, because we're going to actually go through it uh, in the energetic section of, of the IP chemistry, and also the values for standard temperature and pressure are also in the data book. So if you're kind of unsure, you can always just flip open the data book and just have a look just to be sure, all right? Okay, so if you recall in IGCSE, we would answer this question in this format as well. I'm going to draw my triangle. So number of moles, volume of the occupied gas, and the molar volume, okay? Small v and large v. So now if you recall in IGCSE, the molar volume is approximately around uh, 24 dm cubed per mole, okay? But in IV, it's going to be a bit different because we're... Because the determined value for IV is 22.7 dm cubed per mole. Okay, so um, so it doesn't matter if you can't if you don't think you can remember this value right now because it's in the data booklet for you to have a look at. So, um, but but my advice to you would be really just do a lot more questions. As you do more questions, you get used to those values. So at the you come to a point where you don't actually flip through the book every time to look for the value. Okay, because flipping through the book during your exam is actually really time consuming. So I would advise you just do more questions, get familiar with the numbers, and you just do great, okay? So anyway, we're gonna get going with this. So since we know molar volume, it's the same for every gas, and we also know the number of moles of helium gas, so we know n, we know large v, so we're looking for little v. So in this case, we would have 0.732 moles multiplied by 22.7 dm cubed per mole, okay? And this will be equal to, as I've calculated prior, let me have a look. Um, here we go. So it is 16.6 dm cubed, approximately. All right, 16.6 dm cubed. So that's basically how you do those kinds of questions. And you can see how effective the use of the triangles are. Like you're able to, like you're able to see how like n times n equals little m, or maybe n over c, which is equals to v, or small v over large v equals to n. So you, you can see that kind of relationship with the triangle and why it's so helpful. Okay, now we're gonna move on to this relatively more difficult one. Determine the concentration of H3PO4, which is phosphoric acid, when 4.81 grams of phosphorus pentoxide, or P4O10, is reacted with six times the amount of water, H2O, in liquid, and the resultant solution is added to H2O up to 500 cm cubed. Okay, so I want you to isolate the question into a few sections first. So firstly, determine the concentration of H3PO4. So that's what we're looking for, the overall answer. When 4.81 grams of P4O10 is reacted with six times the amount of H2O. So uh, let, let me just get something clear. So amount here, actually I'm just going to highlight it. Amount only refers to the number of moles, okay? So, because back when I was in IGCSE, my chemistry teacher was always sick of people saying amount, amount, amount for everything, like every measure. For example, if you were going to say, what's the amount of iron you would have, you wouldn't say 10.8 grams. Instead, you would say maybe 0 0.57 moles. So, amount only refers to the number of moles. It's not referring to mass. It's not referring to volume. It's not referring to concentration. Amount only applies to moles. Right, so just just to clarify that. Anyway, so as we can see here, phosphorus pentoxide is reacted with six times the amount of water, and you might not, and you might think like, wait, how does H3PO4 form? So in this case, we would have to construct a chemical equation. So P4O10, and uh, the question is actually quite nice actually because they said it reacted with six times the amount of water. So plus six times the amount of water, so six H2O. Oh wait, don't forget to put your states. <coughs> okay, and then, and then it would react to your form H3PO4. Okay, now let's just balance the equation quite quickly. So, four phosphorus on this side, and there's only one on this side, so it's just four. And let's just see if the others line up. So, four phosphorus, 16 oxygens, 12 hydrogens, okay? So what, how many oxygens do we have here? We have 16 oxygens and 12 hydrogens as well. So yes, the equation is now done. And that's why the question is sort of nice, because like, it says it's reacted with six times the amount of water everybody said to you, okay? So anyway, now we need to find the number of moles of phosphorus pentoxide. 
So, given that we know its mass, and we also can calculate its relative atomic mass, okay? Relative atomic mass of P4010, that's equal to, let's see what I calculated here. So if you just look up those values in periodic table and just add them up together, but I've done so beforehand, so let me just find it. Uh, here we go. So, it's 316.28, yeah, 316.28. So in this case, the molar mass of P4010 would be 316.28 grams per mole. So now that we know its mass and we know the molar mass, we can use this triangle again. So we know m, little m, big m, little m over big m equals to n, the number of moles. So in this case, we would have 4.81 grams over 316.28 grams per mole. And that's, and this would be equal to, let's have a look here, what does it say? Okay, 0 0.0152 moles, all right? So now, now that we've calculated the number of moles of phosphorus pentoxide, and we can see the ratio between the amount of, the amount of phosphorus pentoxide reacted with the amount of H3PO4 produced. So it's a one to four ratio. So in this case, four times as much phosphoric acid would be produced. So we multiply the number of moles of this by four. So in this case, the number of moles of H3PO4 states would be equal to, as I calculated here, 0 0.068 moles. Okay, so just plug into the calculator, just try it out here. 0 .0 0 0.068, 0 0.0608 moles. Okay, so that's the first part of the question then. We've calculated the number of moles of phosphoric acid produced out of this reaction. But now let's move on to the next part. So here we have the resultant, cons the resultant solution is added with water up to 500 cm cubed, okay? So now that we know that this number of moles of phosphoric acid is now diluted to 500 cm cubed or 0.5 dm cubed. So in this case, if we just look back here, we know little n, we also know the volume. So little n, so the number of moles over the volume would be equivalent to concentration. So number of moles 0.0608 I'm actually just not going to do the thing because we're running out of space, divided by the volume, which is 0 0.5 dm cubed, which in this case would be equal to 0 0.122 moles per dm cubed, or 0 0.122, yeah, or 0 0.122 molarity, okay? So that's basically how you would do this question. So now, because this question is actually a little different, because as you can see, there's visibly a lot more steps than these questions. So let's kind of, let's kind of do a, so let's kind of do a prediction on how many marks this would have. So firstly, assuming that they didn't give you an equation beforehand, this would probably be worth one mark, okay? But the second mark would probably come from the fact that, now, we'll probably, you might think it would probably come from the fact that you calculated relative atomic mass, but it really isn't because, I mean, it's really just looking at values and adding. Anyone can do that, so there's not gonna be a mark here. But the mark comes here when when you have to determine the number of moles, most likely. And this is most likely paired with determining the number of moles of phosphoric acid as, you, uh, as you're able to understand the ratio between the phosphorus pentoxide reacted and the phosphoric acid that is produced. Okay? And then the last mark would probably come from the, your final answer and also your calculation here. So this would probably be worth around... Okay, one more thing. Uh, maybe I would say this would sort of be a mark, I guess. But uh, ju I just put a question mark here, just not sure. So this would probably be worth around three to four marks. So as you can see, it's really important as you write your steps out properly, as you're doing these calculations, in order to ensure the full use of marks. I mean, you could just plug everything into your calculator and just write out the final answer. I mean, you could do that, but most likely you're only going to end up with these two marks. So yeah, so uh, hopefully, hopefully this part helps with recap and um, in the next video we're going to be covering some relatively more complex calculations related to the mole. I'll see you guys next time.